growth and uh, people that um, I guess the public is somewhat turned on. What do you think? We had a whole conversation offline about Drake. Do you think people are tired of Drake? Do you think that Drake need to stand down right now? Um, are people really buzzing about the hundred gigs that were quote unquote leaked? I didn't see anybody talking about it. Um, I see the blogs, you know, of course, academics. People are going to talk about it. But because when you really look at hip hop media from who's out there reporting the Drake news, or whatever, a lot of those people don't really have much to talk about. So Drake is like a really hot button person to speak about. Um, right, right. But I don't hear the streets. I don't hear that. I don't see the Internet. I don't see them talking about this. And if you he would have dropped this 100 gigs last year. The internet would have been on fire. It would have been crazy. I just think the the climate's kind of different. You know, read the room, bro. I, I always say for me, read the room. You know, um, and I feel like yeah, your Drake stands. They appreciate that, but um, the culture right now, he needs to take a break. And it's not because oh, Kendrick flames you. It's like your momentum is not there no more. The tide has kind of turned. Where now. Every time you pop out, it's seeming like desperation and it's seeming like um, you're annoying people. You know, um, the Kendrick the has something to do with it, though. I mean, and, no, Kendrick has a lot to do with it. And yeah. that's why the tides have changed. But I'm saying the reason why people don't want to hear from him is because it's validating a lot of things that Kendrick has said. You know, yeah. so it's like it's kind of proving that point. You got to read the room, bro. And I feel like this is the best time for you to kind of disappear and make people miss you. Um just kind of lie low. I mean, you had OVO this time. What's up with your artists? Push those artists, man. Like, we know Party and everything. You say he's going to do the collab album with Party. Um, but it's like, yo, take some time and just, you never took a break from music. Before the Kendrick stuff, he said he was going to take a break. So why did your, why did that change now? Why do you want to do music? But the tone before the Kendrick stuff is, I'm taking a break. I and will say he, this. Like, if he takes a break right now, it does look like Kendrick shut him down. Uh, I guess to who you're asking. For me, I feel like Not Like Us is still a, a song you cannot avoid. You can't avoid. It's on the radio. It's everywhere. It's being played at games, sports events. Um, everybody, you, you can't ignore this, this, this record. But Drake has so much of a following that his career is not over. It's not dead. It just, I don't know any artist that's been at the peak that never took a break away to go do other stuff here and there. Um, Drake. I don't think he knows how to take a break musically. Yeah. I think he's, so, he's so used to uh, just hitting people with, you know, massive amounts of material and continuously clocking these number ones. He doesn't know how to do anything outside of that. You know what I'm saying? The thing about what, what I find kind of interesting, this is kind of like just my lone thought on why he's he's doing this the way he is, is because I think Drake knows he doesn't make a lot of music that kind of stand the test of time. And mm. so I think that attributes to like, contributes to like um, his, how, how much he drops music and why he won't like take a vacation and away from the music and, and to, to come back you know i feel like um there's a little bit of that worrying if people are gonna miss him and this is just my my lone opinion and i feel like that's why he's still putting out so much because like why you know read the room bro like why would you go drop that what does that do for you at this moment i mean it feeds his base and one thing i can give to him is he's always been able to feed his base more than any artist of this generation but like, um, hey man, just know, know when to just take a break, man. Cool, like, go come back, do some other stuff, and make the people miss you, man. And um, and get back to the music. But right now, is I, I the sentiments that I, I, I see on the internet is people are kind of getting annoyed and it's starting to feel like a desperation move. I think the Kendrick and Drake are polar opposites on so many levels, right? And when you talk about the musical output, I got an echo going on. Is that on my end or your end? I don't have the echo on my end. Okay, cool, cool. Um, Anyway, it's the output, right? It's like Drake is constantly coming with material, constantly coming with material, whereas Kendrick, he can drop whenever, and people miss him. Like like you said, he, we've, uh, he's been allowed, or he's allowed people to miss him, rather, right? And they're obviously polar opposites when it comes to how they approach music, the music they um, you know put out to the public, 
the subject matter, everything. But I think that Kendrick's kind of shown that allowing people to miss you and taking those breaks, even though those breaks get criticized. Okay, people are saying my echo is still there. Oh, uh, shoot, what's going on with my echo? Hold on. Let's see if I can do some things with my mic. Let me turn my shit down or something. I think my mic is probably peeking. Uh, do I sound better now? How do I sound now? You hear me? Yeah, yeah. Y'all give him a thumbs up. Y'all can hear him. Yeah, yeah. You hear me better I was now? Sad if y'all can hear, if y'all can hear Mike without echo. Yeah, we we got echo in here. We got echo in here. Yeah, I still hear it. Ron, you hear it on your end? Let's see. Let me get back to this audio real quick. It is definitely throwing me off. Uh, echo cancellation. Mic check. Mic check. Let's see. Mic check. Mic check. Mm. Let's see. We get another. Still echoing. Still echoing. We got to get this mic. Oh. Yo, Mike. You good? Yep. Mic check, mic check. Uh, okay. Let's see. Is that a little bit better? Uh, I'm still here. Hold on, let me try one more thing, guys. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so try to actually switch over to the other mic. You still here, right? That's weird. You know what? Hold on. Let me jump off. Jump right back. On. Got you. Got you. We here. We here. Mic check. We're having technical difficulties, everybody. I don't know what's going on with the echo, but uh, Servan, you want to speak to? Are you hearing? You're not hearing the Drake in the streets. You think he's cooked? You think no, he's I old? think it's, I think his core fans is listening to him. I don't think they're going anywhere. Um, I don't think he's cooked. I just don't think the excitement for that music uh, or that content that he put out is like making a noise that if it, you know, if he would have dropped last year, what it would have. You know, I don't think. Um, has the streets on fire? I, I don't, I don't, I don't think it has the same effect of if he would have did it sooner. Oh, let me see if my mic's good now. Eh, somewhat. Let me see. Let me turn my joint down over here. Is that a little bit better? Uh, mic check to the people. Mic check. Yeah, thumbs up, guys. If y'all uh, hear me a little bit better. But what I was gonna say, man, they're polar opposites in the way that they approach music, and so. It seems like Kendrick's formula, which is a more of an old school formula, we were just talking about the formula that Wayne has ushered into the game. He said, put on some headphones, bro. Actually, I got some headphones right here. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Hold on. Let me put some headphones on. I got my beats right here. Put on some headphones, bro. There we go. Is that better? We still hear feedback even with the headphones. Because I still still hear. Oh, let's see. Mic check on two. Am I feeding? Uh, am I getting feedback from your end? How about you jump off real quick and uh, jump? I'll jump off and jump on. Yeah. All right, y'all hear me better now? We're still getting feedback. They said the headphones were worse. Uh, yeah, I think it might have been from uh, his end. They said I'm good now. Okay. Yeah, uh, maybe if he jumps back on and maybe adjust some of the stuff that he got going on. All right, let's see. Yeah, it was gone when... Um, and not, now I'm paused. All right, you hear me? Mic check, mic check, mic check. 
Right, I, I was hearing you just fine. I don't. I guess it was putting out echo on that. Yeah, I don't know what was going on, but yeah. So as far as like the output or whatnot, that formula, I don't know if that's um, Drake needs to focus on quality. And again, I think that when you start matching up against somebody who focuses on quality, which is Kendrick, regardless of what you guys feel about his music, some of the people who would detract us about Kendrick's music, his bass always feels like Kendrick gives them quality material. And I think that for a minute, Drake has kind of been skating through in this um, in this quality control type of climate. And he's been able to skate through by giving people a bunch of volume. And when Kendrick hit him with four records in like four days, he showed that I could provide quality and I could provide the, um, the volume that you provide. And to me, I think the biggest thing as far as uh, their back and forth and what has hurt Drake the most moving forward is the culture vulture um, context and the conversation that Kendrick has created around Drake at this point. And I think that's what's gotten into Drake's head. And I think that's what he's trying to work out of because that was never a conversation before. All that other stuff is whatever, whatever. But when you say that somebody's a culture vulture and they really aren't of the culture and it's coming from somebody who is in, engulfed and drenched in the culture, now he's having to prove Kendrick otherwise. And like you said, he's doing a bad job of doing it. You know what I mean? You're trying too hard now. It's and I think the, that's what's throwing him off balance. Yeah. I mean, that was a question. I mean, even like, the whole not like us thing and people talk about the race of him drake being biracial I take the race out of it he said i'm what the culture is feeling so when he did not like us when he did the pop-up show he showed you he has somewhere where you can come back he's welcome he's good with people he's introducing the new generation of people that's coming from that area he's beloved where he's from he has a home where's drake home he's now a resident of houston yeah, he has the crib in, in Canada, and I think nothing was the same as when he gave you a glimpse of, you know, a little bit, I guess, his attempt of showing where he's from and then, you know, views from the sits a little bit. But we don't see what Drake really comes from. We don't know what what he matches up against as far as going back home and what's his glimpse of where that, you know, what is the culture from him? You know, his culture is – a chameleon of wherever he's at at the time or who he's associated with. And that's what's the difference of how I see not like us and what he was saying, the things he was saying is like, yeah, say what you want. I'm what the culture's feeling. I have a background. I have a home I can go to. I yeah. know where I'm beloved that. Can we say the same about you? And so while everybody's taking the wild takes of what they want, not like us, and he can't say nigga no more, all that stuff, what they take from, they're ignoring the point that that's what his thing was is, He's now putting it in your face that I come from somewhere. This is my culture. I'm of this culture. What's yours? And, yeah. I, and when Drake is attempting to try to show and prove that, he's doing a terrible job. And it's it's feeding into the hands of everything that Kendrick's been saying. Yeah, and, and it shows the fact that he doesn't really know how to come from that place of you know being genuine. He's been a chameleon for a large part of his career. Even around the time when, I mean, I don't know if you remember the records that he was doing with like um, Elza, Fonte, and Ninth Wonder and stuff. It's like he's done a great job of being able to mesh with other acts. That's why him and Ross make such dope music together. But being from Houston sonically one minute, being from Memphis sonically one minute, being from Atlanta sonically one minute, has come back to bite him and come back to bite him from somebody who is real, real West West and actually made a real West Coast song to do it. And he's showing that, like, yo, I'm from the West Coast. This DJ Mustard record, this is my West Coast culture. This is where I come from. You're not like us and the rest of hip hop. And it's like now he's trying to, he's trying too hard to prove otherwise. I think also what Drake's doing currently which is smart and what most artists have done. Fat Joe done, has done it. LL Cool J's done it. He's doing it right now. He got a record with Sweetie. He's connected with the younger artists. And he's kind of 
you know, giving them a wave, but also kind of riding their wave as well. And some of the things that Kendrick is saying is resonating to the younger people because they see Drake doing that with their favorite artists right now. I think, I think he just needs a strong piece of solo work. Um, but I agree. He might need to chill for a second and really work on it. Yeah, I mean, let's not take away from the fact, like, people in Toronto love Drake. I mean, he's sort of the reason why the tourism is probably up, because everybody want to go see the sits. What is Drake talking about? But the optics of getting a glimpse into – uh drake and his culture and where he comes from we have we haven't really seen that you know it's kind of been borrowed from wherever he's associated with at the time in my opinion well let's be honest let's be honest i mean I, i'm from the days when chuck claire and uh cardinal official were like you know the artists that were coming out of canada um drake wouldn't have made it this far if he was really coming with the canadian sound you know what i'm saying like if he was coming across the border saying, look, I'm going to give America cash money records, young money records, this Canadian vibe, he wouldn't have made it this far. So part of him getting to this point, he had to assimilate and had to actually, you know, mesh in with different markets in the U.S. And that's part of Kendrick's point. Like, I ain't have to do that. Like, I could really give you who I am and I didn't have to go out there and, you know, create you know i have to mesh in with memphis do what atlanta's doing i'm able to be kendrick lamar and be where i'm at somebody said canada doesn't have a sound i will say this ovo does have a sound if that's canada sound i don't know no that, <laughs> there's a sound now because of drake we have to give him that credit that sound mm -hmm. that he ushered in. that is what anybody's coming up now from that area that's kind of like their influence now so we have to say yeah. that but like i i want to say this without contradicting my last statement i still feel like a sound and a culture is different and i feel like we still haven't got the culture of where he's from as an artist like we haven't got that um you know and and that's what's very telling between the two and essentially that's like kind of why we have to start looking at the optics um your your failed attempts of of trying to connect in we haven't we haven't seen where your culture lies you know um is it is it houston is it is it where where is it is it atlanta where where is it that you want to be from at this time man you know and i don't feel like this was a question of drake at all until kendrick called it out like people let drake ride whatever you want the ride feet in his base he's been on top for so long that nobody questioned it and it's only because uh people were scared to and then we have this guy sticking his nose out uh that's you know member of what they would say the big three and he's proven that the culture fills him he has like I, I can keep on being repetitive on this he has a home you know um it's not taken away from drake as an artist it's not taken away from what he contributed to the game when it when it's all said and done he'll be mentioned with the greats but when we decipher these two it's it's a big difference culturally yes MJ with the super chat says, when is this quote unquote unquote culture? Uh sorry, sorry, where is this quote unquote unquote culture when Nas dropped magic and KD3? Come on, Mike. We have no culture. The culture supports the gossip and name calling. Well, I mean, listen, I think the culture is the grassroots at this point. And I think that, you know, we as the grassroots were very vocal about the fact that uh KD3 classic material magic classic material from an mc who's been in the game 30 plus years and did it at 50 years old and dropped six quality albums in four years it's unprecedented i mean Nas is the greatest mc of all time uh i think that he should have got more mainstream love and when i say mainstream love it's because he is a mainstream artist whether you know us to the core love him on a different level i really blame new york radio hot nine seven specifically for not supporting an album like kd3 i think that's it's egregious and i don't want to hear any conversations from people who are on those platforms about older mcs and what's the problem with that the problem is when our great mcs or our classic mcs are making new material you don't support it 
and you don't go out there and play records that you would have played from them 20 years ago. Like if Nas would have made Get Light in 2002, it would have got played on Hot 97. He makes Get Light in 2022, whenever, yeah, it's 2022, and it doesn't get played on Hot 97. It's it's insane and it's political, and we already know that you guys aren't about the music. So I mean, they playing yeah. themselves when it comes to that. I mean, uh, I want to ask you though. Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. No, proceed. You you got it. I was gonna ask you. How does your era view Drake? You said he's gonna go down as one of the all-time greats. How does you know? How do people in your era of hip hop view Drake? You top ten, top five. Some why? people put some people will put Drake in their top five. Like, what has that changed? Now? Has that changed now? After no, the I don't think it changed because I feel like he's already solidified. Um, the only thing that I wish came out of their beef, uh, similar that i you know I, I when i look at drake and kendrick what i wanted out of this beef was the same thing i got out of the the um nas and jay beef and that's just good music they both delivered great albums you got the blueprint one you got stillmatic so yeah we got good beef songs but i what i'm looking for is the great music that comes afterwards you know um yeah. this, this this drake and kendrick stuff and right now i'm still looking where's it where's it at we're still riding off not like us um I want to see what the good music that is there that follows, you know. Well, I guess we got to stay tuned for that on Drake's end. I will yeah. say this, and I, and I say, I mean, I want to see it on both ends. Yeah, you know? I think Kendrick's done. I think that at this point, even if Drake responds, Kendrick doesn't have to say anything. You know he what does. I'm saying? Like, it's pretty much done at this point. But I will say this: Drake did step it up when it came to, um, you know, um, um, Family Matters. I think Family Matters is hard. I listen to Family Matters still. I think he was caught off balance when um, Kendrick came with uh, Meet the Grams directly after that, and hours later came with Not Like Us. I think it was a mistake to go out there and put out the heart, what was it, part six or whatever? That was a mistake. I think if there was any time to chill out, it was that moment. Let Not Like Us ride and let people feel like, okay, well, he's working on something or something like that. I will say this, the difference between Jay and Nas, and I do think both of those guys were trying to destroy each other, I think Kendrick's really trying to destroy Drake on a different level. I think that both Jay and Nas understood that their opponent was so formidable that there was a level of respect there. I don't see any level of respect from Kendrick when it comes to Drake. I think he's been wanting to destroy Drake for a minute. And, and we're talking about somebody who takes six-year breaks between albums. He dropped four songs in four days. That is so uncharacteristic of him. He waited for this moment. He wanted this moment. And when you look at even um, like that, he egged this moment on. Like, he wanted this. And he made Drake feel like he started something that he wasn't going to finish. But then he finished it when Drake wasn't, you know, when Drake least expected it. And so I think that's the main difference between this. It's... It's a total annihilation at this point. I hope Drake can. I think him making this a formidable situation, that's over. I don't know what he can do to balance this out. I think that. I know exactly what he could do. Go ahead. I want to hear Make this. good music, bro. Give us solid. If you're going to continue to do music, give us good music and not this microwavable stuff. Just give us good music. Uh, I always say a turnaround to an artist's career is one hit away. But for Drake, we know he has the ability to make a hit. He's one of what the best. What kind of hit do does he need to make though? Because right now, a lot of the hits that he's done won't work with this culture vulture uh, monker on him. He can't go he out there and do. He can't go out there and do no uh, New Orleans bounce. What was that that he did? It was yeah. Scorpion sing. He, he needs a great album, and yeah. I think that will be the thing. But for me personally, what I'm saying, he needs to take a break. Um, <laughs> put some put some time into other endeavors. You know. But that's what I'm saying. And then come out with a fire album, a fire yeah. album. I'm talking about, uh, I don't give us 10 to 12 songs, no skits. Yeah. No, give no us features. Skits. What do you think about features? I don't have a problem with features if it makes sense. Don't give me a feature because you're trying to put on somebody who's hot to try to get their audience. Like, I want to hear a feature that makes sense, you know, like for Drake, because we've seen 
the people he went and collaborated with and at the time of where those artists were in their careers as well. And that's minus the, the up and comers that he kind of brought to the forefront with him featuring on there. I'm talking about like, we seen you collab with future. We seen you collab with 21. We seen you grab them little baby. We seen you, uh, or, or dirt. We seen you work with them at the height of their careers. Give me features that make sense. Give me a great album, uh, a great project. Um, and I think that that will make that put you back in the conversation. Well, he's not ever going to be out the conversation in this generation. What do you have? Uh, Let me ask you that. Where do you have? Man, What's your top five? I'm so biased. Drake is not in my top five, and it's okay. not a shot to him. That's it's just not biased. He's it's not, not in my. Either. He's not in my top five artists because some people who I'll even put in my top ten or top five is other people that they probably wouldn't. So my top five. Well, I'm always going to say Jay is my favorite artist of all time. Jay. I'll have to give it the Pac. I'll have to give it the Big. I'll give it the Nas. I'll give it the Wayne. Who is that? Who that's is five. It? That's five. Okay, yeah, Drake's not passing those guys. Um, is is Drake top fifteen for you or top fifteen? Yes, yeah. fifteen. Okay. Yes. Uh, Laura Vinci with the super chat says Drake's culture is Jewish. People um are, are just practicing cognitive distance. Um, well, I mean, I think that's great advice and that's a uh, great insight. I do think he needs to take a break. I do think he needs to come with quality music. Um, I think that this, uh, this hundred gigs, I don't believe that it was really leaked. I think it was leaked by him just to see if the streets are still rocking with him. Um, and, checking the temperature. and, and, and to your point, it kind of showed you that. People didn't care. 